Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white equipment deck featuring Astor, Bear of Blades as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4-mana 4-4, four four. when it enters the battlefield we can look at the top 7 cards of our library, reveal an equipment or vehicle and put it into our hand, and then equipment we control can be equipped for just 1 mana, and vehicles we control have crew 1. So Astor provides immediate card advantage when he enters the battlefield, since we're very unlikely to miss in this deck, and then also gives us a nice mana discount when equipping, and crewing can also be useful. So a great card to have as our commander. I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with removal. There's not much of it, but Source of Plowshares is too good to ignore. We've got Lightning Bolt dealing 3 to any target. Chandra can deal 4 damage to a creature and then generate more mana with the plus 1. And Nahiri, updated with Alchemy, can minus 3 and deal damage to target creature or planeswalker, equal to twice the number of warriors and equipment we control. And there's a ton of warriors throughout the deck. Astro also a warrior, so this can often kill whatever we want it to, and then the plus one makes a 1-1 token that we can equip right away for free, which can also come in handy. The minus two provides additional card advantage. Then the next category are the creatures that all synergize with equipment nicely. At one mana as per sentinel, can increase its tax if we can increase its power by equipping it. Fireblade Charger gains haste as long as it's equipped and when it dies deals damage equal to its power to any target. Gavalier, a 1-1 Trampler, getting a plus 2 bonus for each equipment attached to it, similar to the Champion of the Flame, getting a plus 2 plus 2 bonus instead. Then we've got Dwarfhold Champion, a 3-1 with Ward 1, getting two additional toughness if equipped, definitely one of the weaker creatures so can easily be cut. Then a Core Blade Master, 1-1 Double Strike, saying equipped warriors we control have Double Strike, and there's a ton of those throughout the deck. Sram, a 2-2, saying whenever we cast an aura, equipment, or vehicle spell, we get to draw a card, so it can be a very nice source of card advantage. Arms Scavenger is also a fun one, making equipping one cheaper to activate, and then can also find cards from its spellbook every turn, so that can provide a nice bit of card advantage, and there's a ton of fun equipment to choose from, including, as we'll see later, the Colossus Hammer, which has a great synergy with Astor, as we can equip it for one mana as opposed to eight. And then we have the Swiftblade Vindicator, a 1-1 with a double strike, vigilance and trample, so a ton of great keywords to benefit from increasing its power. Danitha also benefits from being equipped as a 2-2 with first strike, vigilance and lifelink, and then equipment spells we cast also get a 1-mana discount. Akiri can provide additional card advantage if we hit the opponent with our equipped creatures, and the white activated ability can also save our creatures from removal by making them indestructible if we unattach an equipment, and with a 1-mana equip ability from Astor, it's much easier to keep our creatures equipped, so we can protect them with Akiri. And then Halvar we can often play as Sword of the Realms, a two-man equipment giving plus two plus two and vigilance, and when the equipped creature dies, we can return it to its owner's hand, so great insurance against removal spells, and can also play Halvar as a 4-4, saying creatures we control that are enchanted or equipped have a double strike, which can also come in handy, and can also move around some equipment for free. And then Bruinor updated with Alchemy, now a 5-4, giving each creature we control a plus two power bonus for each equipment attached to it, and once each turn we can use its ability to attack an equipment we control to target creature we control for free. And then a Ryu, a 3-3 first strike, saying whenever a samurai or warrior we control attacks alone, we get to untap it, and then we get an additional combat phase afterwards. So if we can equip one creature and significantly increase its power, it can set up two devastating attacks to potentially kill the opponent out of nowhere. And finally we have the new Danitha, still has the same keywords, now a 4-4, and when it enters the battlefield, we can put an aura or equipment card from our hand or graveyard onto the battlefield attached to Danitha. Don't have a ton of ways of discarding our equipment, a few of them we can sacrifice, but even just putting an equipment from our hand attached to Danitha can save us a ton of mana. And then we get to the actual equipment, starting with Boots of Speed to give our creature plus one plus and haste, Collar can give Death Touch and Life Link. Bone Splitter, two additional power, and then Colossus Hammers, one of the more exciting ones, giving plus 10 plus 10, and the equipped creature loses flying. So equipping this for one mana with Astor feels like cheating. 
Then we've got Eater of Virtue, which is a better bone splitter. Shadow Spear plus one plus one at Tray Implant Lifelink. Plate Armor now costs two mana as opposed to three and gets a one mana discount to equip for each author equipment we control, giving plus three plus three and war to one. The Crowbar is a great one as it can blow up opposing artifacts or enchantments, can potentially get it back with Danitha for instance. Then we've got the Horn of Valhalla, which can be adventured to make an army of soldier tokens, and then the equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each creature we control. We've got Fiend Lash, giving plus two plus so and reach, and whenever the equipped creature is dealt damage, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker, which can also quickly add up. The Axe gives plus three plus so and changes creature types. We've got Black Blade Reforged, another great one, two mana to play, and then equips a legendary creature for three mana, but of course we can make that one with Astor, giving plus one plus one for each land we control. Then Mirror Shield as protection to give Hexproof, Got Maul of the Skyclaves for plus two plus two flying and first strike. Forebear's Blade gives plus three plus oh, Vigilance and Trample. Got Sword of Body and Mind, which can also be very fun, especially against blue and green decks, as we can mill the opponents and make a wolf token each turn. Got Helm of the Host, this is probably one of the most fun equipment to equip onto Astor for just one mana as opposed to five. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, we get to make a token that's a copy of the equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary, and then also gains haste. So we can keep making more copies of Astor, which will find more equipment when it enters the battlefield. So not only do we get an extra 4-4, but it also provides a ton of extra card advantage, and then also gets around the legendary rules so we can have as many of them as we want. And then finally, Amber Cleave, as we all know, very powerful, even though our deck isn't really going wide, so we're not getting a huge discount on Amber Cleave, but still seems worth including. And then we also have a bunch of equipment that double up as creatures, either because they have Living Weapon, in which case they come attached to a 0-0 germ token, or they are creatures with a reconfigure, so they start out as creatures, but they can also function as equipment, and they still synergize very nicely with Astor. So we've got Foundry Beetle, which can also give us a small mana discount each turn, Lizard Blades for Double Strike, Ogre Head Helm for plus two plus two, we've got Batterbone with Living Weapon giving plus one plus one Vigilance and Life Link. Got Cloud Steel Kirin, which can prevent us from losing the game. So against the decks that don't have any removal, this can just win us the game on the spot. And then Bronze Plate Boar for plus three, plus two, and Trample. And then at the uh, Nettle Cyst, of course, also very powerful, getting plus one, plus one for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Then we also have a few vehicles, since they still synergize nicely with Astor, but it wasn't the main focus of the deck but still have Colossal Plow, which of course now has Crew 1 with Astor out, so now we can easily attack with it and then generate a big mana advantage as well. Caravan makes mana or can be a 5-5 vehicle. Weatherlight can also provide additional card advantage if it hits the opponent by finding a historic card among the top 5, and most of the cards in our deck are historic, either being artifacts or legendary creatures. We've got the Mysterious Limousine, which can act as removal, exiling a creature when it enters the battlefield, and Sky Sovereign can deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks. And then we've got some mana acceleration with 2 mana artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. And then the Inspector gives all our artifacts a 1 mana discount, and Relic of Legends also very nice, as we have quite a few legendary creatures, so it can also give us a small mana boost. And then we've got a few enchantments that help us find any equipment in our deck, which can be nice to find some specific cards in certain situations. The Forging the Tyrant Sword also makes some treasure first to give us a bit of a mana boost. And then the Fighter class can also be leveled up to make it even cheaper to equip our various cards. And then Rune of Speed and Rune of Sustenance are also pretty fun, as we can put these on our various equipment to give them a lifelink, draw a card as well in the process, and in the case of Rune of Speed, plus one plus two and haste as well. And then the mana base also includes Mech Hanger, which can help us crew our vehicles if we don't have any creatures out, the Channel Lands, Iganjo, and the Crucible, as well as the Den of the Bugbear, since we are an aggressive deck after all. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and uh, up against five color shrines. So we have a bit of removal with Limousine and Flagship, but only three lands, no ramp. I think we take a mulligan. This is better. Cold Seal Heart sets up turn three Astor. And then, uh, yeah, we can hit pretty hard with a Vindicator, which can trample over all the 1 1 tokens they can generate. So question is whether we play Astor on 4, probably okay to do so. 
the skin name red. Could also maybe go with Vindicator plus Sword of the Realm, especially if we draw land. That way turn 4 I can play Astor and equip. Now this still comes into play tapped. I guess I could go Gavalier plus Sword. Is that better? And then next turn equip. Yeah, maybe that is worth it. Play this on white. And a bronze plate boar. It is not bad if we equip it to Gavalier with uh, Astor. Just a bit expensive to play in the first place. So we probably have better cards we can find. Okay, Stone Fang's gonna start draining us. And a Mox Amber does not make any mana just yet. Danitha could be exciting. Could play Danitha now, although we're not getting a ton of value out of it. So we'll stick to the plan. Astor finds a crowbar. Not actually all that bad in this matchup. Attack for five. And if they trade, we get our Gavalier back. Opponent accepts. And then next turn we could maybe play Crowbar plus Vindicator and still equip. Time for the uh, commander here. Nope, dry it first. Lost Wisdom. Alright, so our opponent has three shrines in play. They can start milling us, which actually enables Donitha. Could get back a Boots of Speed now. Ooh, a Colossal Plow. That one's also tempting. So how about Crowbar plus Plow, and then I can equip Astor, or I can play Gavalier. Close call. I guess Gavalier's fine for now. No need to equip since we can attack past the Dryad. And then if our opponent keeps milling us, we might find something more exciting with Donatha. Or I can sacrifice the crowbar and then get that back as well. And the plow will help us make more mana. So life's origin. Which can get back enchantments from the graveyard as well. Maybe if we take out Dryad, they don't have the right colors but it looks like they're pretty set. So they can use Tranquil Light to tap things down as well. Including Colossal Plow. So maybe we go after Tranquil Light first. Since they have three, four, five shrines total, so this only costs a single white mana to activate. So yeah, let's go after Tranquil Light. Which is going to stop us from doing anything otherwise. So I could crew in response, but then they just use Sanctum again to tap down the plow, which is the thing we actually want to attack with. So that all happens. Okay, and then now... How do we feel about Vindicator, Crew Plow, attack with it? And then I can still play Donitha, get back Crowbar. I think we even have the mana to equip Sword to the Plow. So they wouldn't be able to trade for it since we'll be able to get it back. Okay. I guess Limousine was also an option to get rid of the Life's Origin. But this should be fine. Opponent takes it. And then next turn we can activate Crowbar and Limousine Exile, a key creature. Opponent back up to 17. Let's see what they drew for the turn. They could spend 5 mana to get back the Sanctum, 
which would leave them with two activations. They can activate their commander at instant speed. Lost Wisdom does not activate. Alright, so I'm not sure what they're hanging on to. Can start with Limousine, Exile, Life's Origin, and see how they respond. Alright, gets back Sanctum. Makes another token as well. And then Crowbar the Sanctum. Make them respond. Danitha, tab down. Do I crew? Plow in response. I don't think so. I'm okay trading plow for dryad. So now we can crew. Won't have the mana to equip sword. So the mana from plow does go to waste a little bit. But that's okay. Can uh, equip second main, I suppose. Pretty happy with this trade. Could take out the two shrine tokens to uh, power down Sanctum. Opponent just chumps instead. Fair enough. And then what's the most important creature to protect in case of a sweeper? Don't mind replaying my commander, maybe Donitha. Although Vindicator does benefit the most from additional power. Alright, we'll pass. The limousine does not have any passengers, so we can easily exile another creature with it. And yeah, there's a sweeper, like we suspected. So Donitha back to hands. Astor back to command zone. And opponent mills us, which can maybe help with Donitha. So I think that's the play here. We can get back the Boots of Speed. Although we could also crew Colossal Plow with uh, Donitha or even Astor. So we have options. If I crew Plow, I can still equip Sword second main. I think Hasty Donitha might still be better. Although crowbar is tempting, actually. Sure, we'll uh, go for crowbar. And then we can crew the limousine instead. And our opponent packs it in. Yeah, triple crowbar here, thanks to Donitha. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Sultai enchantment deck. And our hand has potential if we can string together a few additional land drops. Especially if we can play Sram and Hammer in the same turn to draw a card. Plate Armor can draw. So we've got plenty of equipment here. So I'm gonna hang on to Shadow Spear as another card or effect alongside Sram. And then turn to Vindicator. We don't mind as much if it gets answered. Cold Steel Heart's nice. And a Relic. Okay. So really need a third land. There's Tatsunari, and a Temple. So we could fall behind on mana very quickly here, and yeah. So if I play Sram, it most likely gets answered, but at this point we don't really have a choice, I don't think. Ranger class is fine. Makes a wolf and a 3 3 frog. And they're just gonna level up. Okay. So we get to untap with SRAM. And we even found a land, so now I'm lacking Relic into Colossus Hammer. Draw a card, and then SRAM can tap to play maybe a Boots of Speed. 
draw another card and set up Astor to equip Colossus Hammer onto Vindicator potentially, which will hit incredibly hard. And then Astor also taps for mana with our Relic, so we could play more equipment out. Setting up for a very nice turn. A Replicating Ring, that's fine. And a Destiny Spinner is acceptable. Okay, so your opponent's still playing fair. Although they are hitting us for 10, so we're also in danger of dying. But let's see if we can one-hit KO our opponents. So step one, play Astor. See what we get. And a Helm of the Host is a fun one. Probably won't have time for that, unfortunately. Although, then again, might still be the pick since these other ones also don't seem particularly exciting on this board. And then I could play Shadow Spear. Leaves me with two mana to equip Hammer and Shadow Spear to the Vindicator. That seems fine. Since we don't really need Boots of Speed for haste. One mana, equip my Double Strike Trampler. And give it life link for good measure. All right, that works. And then maybe next turn we could have fun with Helm of the Hosts, copying Astor to find more goodies. So your opponent's at two. Binding can take care of Colossus Hammer, maybe. Although Donitha can get it back. So that's fine. And yeah, Relic of Legends putting in a ton of work was one of the last cards I added, but proving to be very useful since our deck does have a lot of legendaries. The few creatures we do play happen to be mostly legendary. We could trade, I'm fine taking three. And then, yeah, I think uh, Donitha get back Hammer, and then we could give Donitha Haste and Trample as well. Or we can move the Hammer to Vindicator. And yeah, put on packs it in. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw up against Umezawa, so can cheat some scary creatures into play in a specific build. But we've got a pretty nice hand with turn 2 Cold Steel Heart ramping into turn 3 Chandra potentially. Which can generate more mana to maybe play a Scavenger. Or maybe kill their commander. So turn 1 we're going to want to fetch probably a Mountain. So turn 3 Pass comes into play untapped. Don't know if our opponent's going to have many artifacts or enchantments. Do we see an early ninjutsu enabler? Possible opponents, kind of a fair ninja synergy tribal deck. Could be that they're trying to cheat some very expensive creatures into play. And a lightning bolt could also come in handy. I think we still play Cold Steel Heart. And uh, white's fine. So if our opponent plays a 2 4 next turn. We would lose Chandra if we play our minus three. So we might take a different approach. Play some creatures first to protect, although Malison can become unblockable. Could also play Chandra plus and then either play Scavenger or Lightning Bolt. So no ninjutsu. And our opponent passes with a bunch of mana up. Well, Chandra plusing for mana and then going Lightning Bolt plus Hammer is quite tempting. Although, kind of expecting a counter spell now. So maybe the plan is Scavenger, which is still pretty good if it resolves. And then we can play Hammer and keep a Bolt. When facing counter spells, it's better to try and double or triple spell. So neutralize. Got baited out, and I should probably just kill the Malison now. 
since they might have some protection spells. Okay. So, opponent's got an empty board now. Not under any pressure. Plays Umizawa, which we're happy to kill with Chandra. Assuming it resolves. So, kind of an unusual start for our deck with lots of removal. Cling to Dust, Exiles Bolts to draw. And then next turn we can use Chandra's mana ability to potentially play our commander and equip Hammer. For now they just replay Umezawa. Okay. Could also play Bruinor to equip Hammer. So we have options. And then we can play Crowbar as well. So we have an extra blocker available. And then maybe equip the token itself. So we diversify our threats. 1612, pretty large. Opponent kills our token, but now we still have a Bruinor. Which can prevent the opponent from enabling ninjutsu. And we get to untap. Putting a rune on hammer is pretty nice too. They might still have a counter spell available, which is a reason not to go for Astor. Although we have the mana to replay Astor, even having to pay the commander tax. So I'm not opposed to trying it here. Okay, that resolved. And gets probably a plate armor overbore, but it's close. And then I could play Voyager. Although then we won't have the mana to use the Voyager's ability to make something indestructible. In case of a sweeper, opponent is playing snow lands, might have blood on the snow. So how about plate armor? Can equip hammer to Brunor. Using Brunor's ability, which is slightly modified from the original version here, as you can tell. Okay. Yeah, I think we attack first for 17, and then maybe equip Hammer to Astor. The safest play would be to keep both creatures back, to make sure they don't get to ninjutsu anything, in case they remove my one blocker, for instance. But hitting for 17 is also quite tempting here. Opponent trumps. And slip out the back, okay. And then I can move the hammer to Astor if I'd like. And, uh, yeah, I don't get to equip this, do I? Yeah, just double checking. All right, let's see if they can do something powerful. Two cards in hand would have to be removal plus super expensive creature. Dusk Mangler's not bad. So, probably sacrifice Bruinor, keep Astor to block Humizawa, and then Rune can go. And then now Chandra could minus kill Dusk Mangler. I'm pretty sure we could present Lethal. Uh, Nahiri can minus. We've got three equipment, deal six damage, so it can clear both of the opponent's creatures here if we want. Chandra minus on Mangler, and her opponent packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ziatora, a sacrifice deck. This hand would be great if we had red mana, as is. It's a pretty big gamble, although sort of body mind can be kind of nice with the protection from green. Don't think it's worth the risk here. Okay, this is better. Plow, we can crew on turn four with uh, Astor. Maybe play a Swords afterwards. Sram on turn two, also pretty nice. Do I want Maul? 
flying over the sacrifice deck. Is that relevant? We already have a Sky Sovereign. I think I need a land more than I need a Maul. Turn to Magda. So Dwarves versus Dwarves. Could also play Vindicator, which blocks Magda profitably, and we're less sad if it gets answered. Yeah, I can buy that, although we would like to curve Sram into Plow to draw a card. But I think I might have to give up the extra card. Also easier to play Sram with the white mana from Plow. So now if they kill Vindicator, we don't feel as sad as uh, Sram getting answered. Fireweaver pings us after Magda makes a treasure, so they're willing to give up Magda just to have one treasure token. And we found Fabled Passage, so next turn we can play Astor. And crew Colossal Plow. No point in attacking, since I'm not willing to Swords a Fireweaver. Okay, so we're not in a bad spot here. Opponent's gonna play a Woe Eater. Yeah, that's probably worth exiling so we can clear a path for Plow. Opponent does gain a bunch of life. And then we'll see what else Astor can find. A one mana equipment would be nice to maybe play off the mana after playing SRAM. Crowbar I'll take. Attack. And then, yeah, probably play SRAM. And hope they don't answer it. Can draw off Sky Sovereign and Crowbar. Five mana for Boundless Sky, for four Flying Death Touch. Cloud Steel can give Flying. Okay, so we have some options. Can still trade Plow for Boundless Sky, which probably searches up a couple lanes. So we could start there. If I play Crowbar, we draw with SRAM, could equip the Vindicator, so that gets to attack as well. Kind of want to draw land here. So we can still play a Sky Sovereign second main, although now I might be better off just attacking and then playing Sky Sovereign with a Plow mana. So Vindicator does not get to attack. Fine to trade Astor. Opponent trades for Plow. And then Sky Sovereign gets to draw, finish off Fireweaver. And we're pretty far ahead on board. Could see them make a token to maybe synergize with their commander. They could get any land, including some utility lands. Like maybe Phyrexian Tower just gets some dual lands. Okay, Fireweaver down, play then and pass. So even if they have a Sweeper, we can recover pretty nicely. It's gonna be a Gold Span. Will uh, soon be changed back to its original form. But uh, yeah, opponent scoops it up. We can Crew Sky Sovereign, prevent Gold Span from attacking. And then next turn we probably still have some good attacks. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Soul of Windgrace, a Junt, a land recursion deck. And this hand is probably not keepable without red mana. This is a little bit better. We'll still need to draw a couple lanes. Turn one, I guess Esper Sentinel is usually a good strategy. Can expect lots of fetch lands from the opponents to get back with Soul of Windgrace. For now, play Champion. Attack for one. Could also put the Runo Speed on Sentinel to increase its power, which will also increase the tax. For now, Brushfire makes sense. Landfall creatures are good in a Windgrace deck. Plate Armor is not bad either. 
So plate armor plus Gavalier. And then next turn maybe put Tarun of Speed on the plate armor. So lots of creatures that benefit from being equipped, only the one equipment at the moment. And we'll take three. And a scythe cat. Okay, land is nice. So we could Nahiri take out, let's say, the scythe cat here. Yeah, I don't think Rune of Speed's very efficient here. So it's either Nahiri or Astor. Now here we could also make a token that gets equipped, but we have enough creatures in play already. And using the removal on these isn't incredibly exciting. So I think we'll go for Astor. And then find... Probably want a cheap equipment. Eater of Virtue. And, uh... Yeah, no attacks. Although, honestly, I'm probably fine to trade for Scythe Cat. and just takes it. So Eater will also make it cheaper to equip plate armor, but as long as we control Astor, it's one mana, so... Cultivates. Get to draw. Denatha lets us play Eater Virtue for free. So what's my plan for next turn? Wanna maybe suit up the Champion of the Flame with a few equipments? Wouldn't mind drawing a land. And then for now, Astor doing a good job on defense. Lotus Field makes a lot of sense alongside Soul of Windgrace. So brush fire up to a 5-5. Five five. Could maybe try and uh, get Donatha equipped so we gain some life back. Alright, there's a land. So Donitha plays Eater of Virtue for free. Still won't quite be able to Rune of Speed and then equip for free, since it's still one mana. We have a couple warriors, so Nahiri can take out whatever we want, including the Scythe Cat. So that could also be a, a line we go for, and then I can still play armor Champion of the Flame. I didn't do the math to see if we had lethal if we equip both Eater and Plate Armor. I guess we were pretty close. 10, 11, 12, plus another 4. Don't think I need to leave anything back. I'm fine if Nahiri dies to the brush fire. And I'm hoping our opponent can deal 12 damage with it. Not impossible, with a fetch land maybe. Into the north for ramp. Triggers brush fire. Although now they can't play Soul of Windgrace, it'll need something else to go with a brush fire. So up to a 5-5. Five five. Are they gonna find seven more damage here? Splendid Reclamation gets a bunch of lands back. Uh oh. 9 9. They almost got there. So yeah, if they actually had a fetch land like Fabled Passage, we might have been dead. But now our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw up against a Johnny Sleeper Agent, so plus one counter deck. And yeah, hand seems fine. Don't expect Mirror Shield to be incredibly useful in this matchup, but they might still have a few removal spells that this can help against. But mostly the early Signets, and now a Colossal Plow also very good with Astor. Basilisk Caller for Death Touch and Lifelink. Druid also plays well with a plus one counters. But uh, I think Signets over Plow. Foundry Beetles also better if we can play it early. And our opponent with a Relic for now, no land. Okay. So I don't think we need to play Astor just yet, so maybe Plow plus Beetle. 
Also an argument for a crowbar, since that can blow up a Relic of Legends. But now we can play Astor, Crew Plow, and uh, potentially play Crowbar with a white mana. And Johnny plussing, revealing Smell Fear, so they actually have a fight spell here, which can also proliferate, a good way to reach ultimate on a Johnny. So yeah, play Astor. Finding Cloudsteel. Crew for one, crew one, and attack. And with our mana, we could play Cloudsteel Kirin, or Crowbar plus Mirror Shield. A minor setback. And that's a pretty good turn. So our opponent's behind on mana, smell fear, doesn't really kill anything. Alright, the wrecker could wreck some of our artifacts potentially. And smell fear can now take out Astor, fair enough. So could have been avoided by equipping a mirror shield to Astor instead of playing crowbar. But we actually don't mind replaying Astor. Just need a lance to get there. And for now, a nettle cyst is pretty large, so it can probably help us crew Colossal Plow. Sure. And then Crowbar probably blowing up a relic to deny more mana. And our opponent's going to have a hard time recovering from this. And sure, we'll play a Cloud Steel and Charger. So Fiend Lash, double discount from Foundry Beetle. But finally found a third land. Is it too little too late, Tarmogoyf? It's been a while since I've seen that one. And Lotus Cobra. Okay, Sram can draw off Fiend Lash. Or I could crew plow and then replay Astor. We have options. Charger can attack since it can kill Cobra if they block it. Trade for Goif. And then replay Astor, see what we get. Sort of body and mind, pretty good against a green deck. For now, play Sram, or do we equip Mirror Shield? And eh, don't really care about Astor getting removed. Also seems difficult in the spot, I guess they could equip Collar and play another fight spell. And our opponent with a Desperation attack, maybe? They could have a pump spell. Either way, We'll find out. Not gonna put Astra in harm's way. Alright, safekeeping. That's fine. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just a big man advantage here early in the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Haktos. And what do we think of this hand? No red mana, only two lands. Although Relic is pretty useful, can help us ramp out some other things, especially with a Kiri in hand. So, yeah, maybe still worth a try. Still would like to draw a red source. And definitely will need a third land. There we go. So, Fiend Lash. Can put a Rune of Speed on it if we want. Although if we play Akiri first, we can maybe start drawing a turn sooner. Ooh, Foundry Inspector. That also discounts my Relic. It is likely to die, so maybe I still go for Relic first. With our opponent keeping up 3 mana. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. 
Time for Hactos. And our opponent rolled a 3, so we actually have a few 3-drops to jump in the way. So, if I play Akiri, I can still play Foundry Inspector. And then Weatherlight will get a discount. Although I might be fine trading Inspector for Hactos, given the chance. Rash Taunter, okay. Actos attacks, we'll trade. So Brush Taunter is pretty good against some of our equipment, but if we can give Trample or Flying, that's an easy way around it. So for now, do we want Weather Light? Or if I play Bruinor, it makes mana with a Relic, so we can still play a Blade afterwards. And then I can equip it for free. Using Brunor. So now they can fight Brunor and deal 10 damage to me, I suppose. I hear he's binding instead. So now we want to diversify a little bit more. Weather Light, I can also give haste with a Rune of Speed. Play Weather Light. Rune of Speed to give it haste. And then I can put the blade on it with uh, Brunor's ability after crewing. I guess never mind. Binding shuts down Brunor's ability. So that's not going to work. So we'll have to use uh, Astor to move the blade. Let's see what we find. Hopefully some life gain. Mirror shield's not bad. Or we can go for a lizard blades for double strike. And yeah, let's go with the blades. And then I still have Akiri's ability at the ready. Which may be worth it here, so Brunor doesn't have as much power. So we don't take as much damage from the fight. So that worked out. Face Feathers shuts down Weather Lights. Okay. So they are slowly dealing with all our threats. And a Tome for Card Draw. Alright, time for Astor and then Blade on Akiri, perhaps. I think with the old templating, Brunor would have been better in this spot. But uh, now it's slightly different where it has an activated ability. Find Embercleave, always good. And can we use Brunor with the Relic? I think we can. Yep. So we can equip Blade for one mana. Equip for one mana. Play Lizard Blades. Equip Lizard Blades. And attack. And that should be lethal. 14 power double strike. And we can trample over. Awesome, GG's. Opponent gets a deal of damage on the way out. And there we have it. Okay. So yeah, we got to see our red-white equipment deck in action. I would probably put it somewhere in the middle on the range of power level. Not the most broken commander deck, but it does have powerful starts and some cool synergies with cards like Colossus Hammer, which can easily win a game out of nowhere. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.